Uh, if you've got your Bible with you, your phone or your iPad, whatever it might be, will you please turn to the book of Joshua? Joshua chapter 7, and we're going to start reading from verse 19. I think we'll go to about 25. Uh, if you're not there, uh, I think you can just follow with us on the screens. Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, It is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messages, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites, and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold bar, his sons, daughters, his cattle, donkeys, and sheep, his tent, and all that he had to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. And all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. We thank God, oh, let's go, just uh, 26, over Achan, they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day, then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. We thank God for the reading of his word this morning. So, sometimes because we try to uh, be sensitive to time, disciplined with our time, I know the past two weeks have just gone a bit long. That's, uh, for those of you who've been around this church, that's unusual. Normally we're pretty good with our time, uh, as I hope to prove today. And uh, so, one of the things, the criticisms of that by outsiders mainly is, so the theology must be light. It's just a motivational speaker coming up there and encouraging. What can you get done in 30 minutes? What depth can there be? Today we solved that. Today I will be talking about sin. Welcome to the famous sermon. All right. So what you should do now is turn to your neighbor and tell them, I think this message is for you. <laughs> okay, so uh, if anything hits a bit too close to home or personal, you just look straight. Don't, don't, don't think I'm, uh, don't feel that guilt and just feel like, oh, no, no, pastor, and, and look around because then you, as Chris would say, you look sus. <laughs> and so you just need to just look straight and here's, here's my advice. This is, if you learn nothing else, men learn this. If what I'm saying is about your wife, yeah. do not <laughs> nudge her, look at her, point at her, act like you're not even listening. When she says, you think that's about me? What, what? I'm sleeping. I don't know. Hey, we lost a cricket bed yesterday. Ooh. And just, just, you need to duck that one. Today's message is dirty little secrets. So, my goal is, in, in, in the course of my pastoring of this church, ministering however long God gives me the, the great privilege and honor of being here, is to elevate you. Help you on the path scripturally to get you from where you are to where God wants you to be. Amen. Believe me. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can ask my family. There's an earnest desire inside of me to see you at your best. Amen. I want everybody to be in, to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Yes. I want God to be front and center of your life. I want you to excel and exceed every expectation in every area of your Amen. life. And I'm very upfront and clear about this. Whether you are a good person or a bad person doesn't really affect me much. So there's no judgment from my side because if you are a horrible sinner, how does it really affect me? Or if you are a wonderful person, it doesn't really affect me. If you are rich or if you are poor, whatever it might be, I'm happy for you. I prefer you not to be bad. I prefer you not to be sick. But at the end of the day, I'm here speaking to try and get you to where God wants you to be. Amen. So when we talk about things like sin, I have no problem really with your sin. I wish you didn't do it, but it doesn't affect me. That's the truth the fact of the matter. I'd love to say I'm more involved in your life or care about you more and things like that. The truth is, when I hear bad things and then when I go home, I'm in my home and I, I hardly ever think about what problems you're going through. Otherwise, it would be a difficult life for me to carry every of burdens everywhere that I am. Yes. So when we speak about these things, I just want you to know that whatever frustration comes through or whatever anger or whatever it, uh, thing I do to implore you to get out of your sin, it's for you. Because there's this blessed life that God wants you to live. And sin 
is a problem. Sin is an obstacle to this. We need to be clear. The devil cannot make you do anything. Yes. So this whole line, uh, how many of you were thinking about Ansi yesterday? <laughs> and we remember with this whole uh, uh, betting scandal or, or with the bookies and all of that he, he went through. His famous line was, the devil made me do it. Uh, with due respect, Ansi. No. The devil cannot force you to do anything. He can tempt you. He can put things in your way. If the devil was able to make us do things, we'd all be doing horrible things all the time that we could legitimately say, I had nothing to do with this. It's not the case. The devil puts temptation in your way. He will use people. He will use things like on TV and whatever to plant thoughts in your mind. You will self-destruct on your own from there. All the devil has to do is make that lady walk in front of you and you know as a man you don't got it no more. <laughs> You know, but all she has to do is give you one eye. And then all of a sudden, even if you're in a wheelchair, you spin the wheelchair with a different vibe. Yeah, the wheelchair got to bounce all of a sudden. All of a sudden, and then you look at you, what happened to this fool? And then you say, no, no, and you start dressing differently and smelling different and all of that. And, and, and so for all of you men who are not sure if you still got it or not, ask your wife, she'll tell you you don't got it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's over. It's over. All the devil has to do is put the trigger, and then we do the rest. So the devil can't make you do it. God won't make you do it. This is how much of choice God gives you. God doesn't even force you to be saved. It's your choice. You are allowed to choose to go to hell. That's how much of, that's how big God is on you have a choice in all of this. So, the ownership that we have to take with our, our sin is this. It's, I'm, it's my doing. Yes. I have the power to do it. I have the power to stop it. Yes, amen. Don't like that. Because it's easier to blame the devil. Yes. It's easier because then we don't have to take accountability and responsibility. I'm not making it seem like it's an easy thing to quit. I understand the addictions, okay, I, I, I try to understand the addictions and, and the processes that go along with that. But if we say something else is in control, then it means we have no chance. That's why the famous first step is accept that you have a problem, acknowledge that you have a problem. Yes. I'd like to say acknowledge that you are the problem. Mm, right. Not to say, again, not to say you're a bad person, yes. but I'd rather accept that I'm the problem. Because I have some power over the situation to change it. Yes. If all I say is this big, bad, ugly devil is forcing me, I'd rather just give up and die. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. And I cannot walk in this freedom as long as I'm a slave to something. And so I want to help people get free from this slavery to sin today. Because as long as you are a slave, you are not free. There's no such thing as a small sin. There's no such thing as a cheap sin. There's no such thing as an inconsequential sin. So the story that we read, which I know we picked up from halfway, I, I did that on purpose. One, the scripture is a bit long. Two, I'd like to paraphrase it and, and, and tell the story. So here's Joshua and the Israelites. Moses has died and God has commissioned Joshua and said, take them over the Jordan. It's time to possess the land. Can I say to you, it's time to possess the land? Amen. Whatever your promise is, whether it be divine healing, whether it be divine provision, whether it be divine happiness, love, joy, peace in your home, whatever it is, it's time to possess the land. Yes. Amen. We love that. That's exciting. What if I said it like this? I'm tired of waiting. Yes. Any other real people in this church? Yes. I understand, be still and wait on the Lord and patience is a virtue. But I also want to talk about the time when we possess the land. Yes. Because it's not a God who plays games and wait, 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 and die. It's wait, 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 and then possess. Amen. I'm, with, I'm trusting God for a season of possess. Yeah. Not demon possess me, but me possess what the demons have. Yeah. I'd like the demons, not me wake up and wonder whether the demons are coming for, him, for me. I'd like the demons to wake up and wonder whether I'm coming for them. Because I'm coming. Yes. Amen. And then Jer Joshua and the battle of Jericho. Jericho was a fortified city. It was the New York of the day. And Joshua and the Israelites, with a miraculous hand from God, go and take the city. Amen. What a story. We tell that story. We don't tell the story of I. I happens after Jericho. Here's the Israelites, the conquering Israelites, entering in this land, having seen the mighty hand of God. 
seeing the next city eye, they've got a confidence about them. They've got a spring in their step. They've got an unbeatable attitude because if God is for us, who can be against us? And so the next city is small. It's much smaller than Jericho. There's nothing to be said about its walls. It's I. It's so small, they named it two letters, A-I. And when Joshua calls his generals together and says, so what's the, what's the tactic? What's our strategy here? They say, just send a few men. It's easy. If God did this, surely he'll do that. that that's good attitude. I'm not, I'm not insulting the attitude. Have that attitude. If God did that, surely he can do this. Amen. But they get beaten so badly. And Joshua goes before God. And he falls on his face. And he cries out, God, what's going on? I think that's where some of you are today. This is why the sermon. Because God did that. And yes, I believe in the... It's time to possess. I believe in the promise. I will shout amen. I love it when pastor says it's our season to go and get it. The suffering is over. Amen. But then every time we step forward, we end up flat on our faces saying, God, what's going on? Hear the word of the Lord to Joshua today. Get off your face. Amen. This is not my doing, Joshua. You... The nation of Israel, the people, have sinned. Yes, right. Now, I'm not saying every problem you're going through is sin. Don't look at, that's why I say, look straight. Don't look at the person next to you and say, so that's why they're life like that, sinners. Mm -hmm. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. They go pray a meeting, but see, it must be sin in their life. Mm -hmm. Don't be a hypocrite. Yes. All have sinned and fallen short of yes. God's glory. Yes. This is a message of freedom for all of us. Yes. If it's not for you today, guess what, you're a liar. Because all of us have sinned, yes. and we need this message of deliverance from yes. sin. If you feel so legitimately, I'm like Paul, oh, I'm so holy and it's not for me today, give it a few days, you'll need this message. And so Joshua, led by God, goes and through a process of identifying where the sin is. And he's found that Achan, see the instruction was, destroy everything, take nothing. And Achan, as we read in the story, saw some gold, saw some nice clothes, and went and took it and kept it in his tent. Here's the thing. When you disobey God, even what you profit from what you did, you will not be able to enjoy it. Because Achan's got this gold, and he's got the silver, and he's got this wonderful robe. But the joys that you get from sin are things that you have to keep hidden and buried yes. because they are shameful. Amen. Don't ever think the wages of sin is death. It's always dead. Yeah. Don't ever think you'll get ahead using sin. Here's how, how we can look at it. Dirty little secrets. So Achan took this stuff and he put it in his tent and he buried it under some stuff. God give me courage because I'm stepping into your tent and I'm asking you what's hidden in your house. Because we know there's a prosperity that we are trusting God for. Prosperity is not just financial. It's spiritual, physical, financial, relational. That's a good life. You got a million friends and no health, no good. You got all the health and you broke, no good. You got no friends to share it with. You got no family, no good. So, so we need it all to work together. But Israel, having seen God's hand, and then facing something that shouldn't be a big deal, but, but it's a small sin, Pastor. It's a small thing. So in a nation of about two and a half to three million people, one guy stole one piece of gold, one rope, and some silver. Oh, Pastor, but you preached on tithing last week. <laughs> Sorry to all those who were here. And it's fine. Everybody's giving the church. It's fine. It, it, it's just my tithe. It, it doesn't matter. No. The people suffer through one man's sin. If I could put it this way, what would God be able to do in and through this church if there was total obedience and one-mindedness in the people? So yes, you count. Yes, you matter. Now that's in a church context. There's been a wonderful response to the message on, uh, on finances. It's been a week like no other in this church. God bless you. 
For those of you who are giving your tithes and your offerings today, just a quick recap. Lord, I thank you that I can tithe. You will throw open the windows of heaven and, of, uh, and pour a blessing I can't contain. You will rebuke the devourer on my behalf. I thank you, Lord, that I can sow this offering because the tithe rebuked the seed eater. I thank you that I can sow the seed. I'm trusting you for a harvest. Then we're looking for good ground somewhere or someone that we are receiving from and we want to sow into that because that's good ground from which we can reap a harvest. Do it deliberately. Do it in faith. Pastor, it's just smoking. It's just weed. It's just all. They made it legal now. I'm, 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 I'm digging in your tent now. And Pastor, it doesn't affect anybody. Uh, it doesn't cost that much. Really? Really? Because I read a story where a nation is hindered from its progress with godly things. Because it's just a small thing. What about this? Pastor, witchcraft is bad. Pastor, all these things where people go and, and get their chances and all of that. Oh, I don't like it. Look how holy I am. It's good that you don't like those things, but on your status, I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> this is my horoscope. It's witchcraft. All of it. Yes. And if you look at it, you say, but it's just a small thing. Look, we need to have this distinction in our lives where we raise up a standard of holiness in our lives and in our homes. Because it is holiness. Holy means separate from. It is the separation from worldly things that allows us to step into other things where God is removing the wickedness from the land and says, my people who I've set apart will now inherit this land. If you are not separated from what they are doing, then why would God move them out and give you the land? How's this one? It's just beer. Because I, I see this culture in churches now where it's, where it's okay to drink. And we'll get the scriptures. The Bible doesn't say drinking is bad. Sure. I agree with you. You know one verse in the Bible. <laughs> Let the anointing fall. But the context matters. In a day where there was no water purification system and where cholera and E. coli, all the sewers and all the drinking water systems were joined together, the only way to purify your drinking whatever is through the process of fermentation. And that's why Paul tells Timothy, your stomach is worrying, you drink a bit of wine. Because the stomach problem was caused by the water. And so when people look at that and they say, but the Bible says, you can drink as long as you don't get drunk. Show me a, a drunk person who knows how to stop before they get drunk. They'll all tell you they know, but we met you. I know how to drink, Pastor, I don't get drunk. Bro, you're buzzing right now. Especially in a community where people are struggling with alcoholism, the solution can't be drink less. When the Bible says drink and don't get drunk, it's like having cough mixture for a cough, but don't go beyond that. Because when you walk in this community and see all the empty cough syrup bottles, it's not because people are coughing. It's a joke. It's a, we're laughing about it, but don't think it's a small thing. One day when you look at your life and say, why God have you not come through? He'll say, get off your face. Yeah. This is not because of me. Yeah. And when you look at it and say, I've got a headache or I've got this pain and all of that, and then you've got still pain, and then you take a bit more and you take a bit more, and years later you're just taking it and you don't have any pains anymore, that needs to stop. Because there is a separation that God is it's just vaping. It's just vaping. Can I ask you this? How does that, that mindset, how does that tie up with God calling us to holiness? I'm not having a go at people who are addicted to these things. I'm having a go at the mindset that says it's okay. I understand if you're struggling with cigarettes. I understand if you're smoking. I understand if you're drinking. If you know you have to give it up. Be a drunkard who knows you have to give it up. Not somebody who says, but the Bible says I can do it. Can we be a church that goes to the Bible not to justify our sin, but look at it as a mirror that calls us to absolute holiness? Because if we look at all the scriptures with finance and we want to look at it like we spoke last week, Tithe, 10% of what? Gross or net? I said, I don't want to answer that question. All I can tell you is the mentality should be, what is the best that I can do for God? Not how do I save a bob or two when I pay him? He's not a car guy. 
is not a valet. He's not a waiter where 15%, let me round it down. God is not mocked. This is not a Mickey Mouse rabbit play around God. This is a King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He can kill you now. I wish the fear of God would come back to church. Amen. Maybe it's because I'm wearing a suit and tie. But I wish we could have an Old Testament fear of a mighty God. Because sometimes we look at the grace and we think we can play around with this God. But this God is to be honored. Amen. This God is to be respected. This God is to be, oh, Pastor, I love this boy so much. I know we're not married, but he, he told me he loves me. Can I tell you something? Having been a boy and having trapped one girl, <laughs> we'll say whatever we have to say. <laughs> we got the tunes, we got the lions. Hey, baby. <laughs> It, just, it didn't feel right. I, it, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. It, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. I thought I'd come across as a, as a player or something. It didn't. It didn't. We're not sleeping with each other. We're just rubbing. <laughs> Even that wasn't a joke. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to convict you of sin. Come on. We just, we just, we just touching, we just, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit in you is supposed to do what when you're doing this? Because the standard of holiness, when you're married, you do certain things. When you're not married, you don't do certain things. Now, I don't want to be like an old grandfather and say, no, no, you mustn't hold hands or whatever it is. I'm not saying do that. But how are you tying up, my body is the temple of the Most High God, with you going and doing all of that there? Where is this thing? How many of you got this? Can I ask what's on it? Because you can't have 4,000 friends. And when your children are chatting to their friends, and it's a social media friend, you need to be on your highest guard and your highest alert. Because I come from the day, and I'm talking about, uh, granted, like 80 years ago. When my parents would not let me go anywhere if they didn't know my friend's parents. How many of you remember that day? And how many of you remember the day that when, your, when the teacher or someone else's parent phones or someone in the church phones and tells your parents you're misbehaving, how many of you know that, how many of you come from the day when your parents didn't fight with them first, they hit you first? I know eating is illegal, but, but, but we lived with criminals back then. We all caught it. After they hit you. Then they will try and find out the truth. <laughs> By the time you... You won't even do... Never mind you didn't do it. You will never do what they accuse you of. That's how good the lessons were. Now, if the teacher says, your child is badly behaved, how dare you say that to my child? Your child is the worst child in the school. How dare you say that to my angel? Satan wishes he had devils like your child. <laughs> <laughs> it's a suit, it's a suit, I'm telling you. <laughs> Can we get back to this place where our priority as parents is not to sort that person out, but to train the child up in the ways of the Lord. And if somebody says, my child did something that I'm not happy with, child, you are a part of my house, there is no such thing as you are on your own. What you do affects the whole family. And I'm not going to work putting up with all the nonsense in this world, trying to get to a place that God is calling us to, only for have you flirting with people online, mouthing off with people, swearing, drinking, fighting, thinking it's not affecting me. I may not know about it, but as a person in this home, you have to behave. And for every child who says, Mom, Dad, this is my personal space, no. I pay the bills. Oh no, but I'm 29 years old. Then move. <laughs> because can we have a deal? Live on your own, curse your own house, good for you. As for me and my house, what you do in your bedroom, on your phone, with your door closed, matters in this house. Because we call pastor, poor man came in the night, prayed and dedicated our house, 
and we said this house belongs to Jesus. Yes. Don't tell me it's personal. I used to tell parents to do this all the time. Audit your children's phones. And all the children said, Amen. no, I need to delete some stuff as soon as I go home. <laughs> and can I just be clear with you? Parents, go check the Instagram. Not the Instagram where they let you friend them and follow them. I'm talking about the secret Instagram. I'm talking about the secret Facebook. I'm talking about the secret account. Oh, but pastor, my child doesn't have that. Ask their friends. Ask their friends. And the children are, who had said amen before. <laughs> Dad, we need to go early today. Uh, after Enoch's funeral, we need to make sure we hear. No. We need to raise up the standard of holiness even if it takes us time to get out of our sins, but be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. That's got nothing to do with the public finding out because can I tell you, who cares what people think? Yes. Really. That's right. Your sin will find you out in a way that harms you. That's right. And on a day when you are saying, God, I'm tithing. I just want to take a small detour. For everybody who comes for counseling, for everybody who says they have a problem and they say, Pastor, we need help. I just want to put it out there. In future, one of the questions I'm going to ask is, do you tithe? Not because you owe me money for the time and all of that. It's got nothing to do with that. The Bible says, like we spoke about last week, there's a curse attached to tithing. I can't help you outrun these things. Yes. You have to say, I'm doing what I'm doing, Pastor, now help me. Not like... Uh, Joshua lying on the ground. God, what am I doing wrong? Woe is me, Lord. Why is the whole world going forward and I'm the only one suffering? Now, I'm not here to say, but other people are better than you. Other people are worse than you. Because what does that matter at the end of the day if you are still suffering? All of us need to come to that place where we say, God, I am striving for holiness. Amen. I am walking, I am working, I am moving towards this absolute standard Amen. in my life. Yes. For me and for you. And if I shine and other people catch the example, good. But I'm not doing this for anybody else. And I'm not doing this because other people say it's good or bad. It annoys me no end when the church has allow it mentality. We say come as you are. But there is a, an encounter with God that must happen along the way. Amen. From the day you walk in as you are to the day that you meet Jesus. Where you've been changed by his word. Amen. Every person who comes to this church over a period of time should be better than you were when you stepped That's in. Right. That's the process. So when we say homosexuals are welcome to come to this church, sure. Does that mean we say God's word teaches that it's like, no. And I think people are man enough, woman enough to understand that. That if someone is here who is an alcoholic, they will understand that you can love them and speak against the alcoholism. Yes, that you can love them and speak against the adultery. Oh, Pastor, it's just flirting. It's just a work colleague. It was just messages. We didn't do anything physical. The Bible says, if you look. Yeah. Yeah. If you even look. So much so, rather take your eyes out. Yeah. I think there'd be a lot of blind people in church if we did that. Because we think, as long as we look, when the wife is looking that way, it's like this, yes, 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 dear, she doesn't. That's where the wheelchair comes in. As long as she doesn't catch me, as long as he doesn't catch me, as long as pastor doesn't know, that's the most useless justification I've ever heard. Pastor doesn't care. Pastor is suffering himself. <laughs> hey, we've all seen that one shot. It's the truth. What sin does pastor have in, have in his life? It's, uh, it's called noib. That's my sin. Never heard of it before. You know why me? None of your business. <laughs> Can we stop being a church that goes to the Bible? Oh, but as long as we're in love, we can sleep together and then go find a scripture to justify that. Mm -hmm. Can we be a church? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm not tithing properly. Let me go find a scripture that says it's fine. Or I like my beer. Let me just go and find a scripture that, that justifies that. Can we stop being that church? Can we stop being that people and say, Lord, you shed your blood on Calvary's cross. You paid the highest price possible. You did the absolute most that you could. Yes. I want to be the best that I can be for you. Amen. Understanding that the only way to get to where you want me to be is free and free indeed. Amen. Amen. Put it here this way. 
for anybody who has an addiction or who does something that you think is not bad it's not a big deal give it up this is why I say this it's not a big deal so it should be easy to give it up but if you find that you can't give it up you can't stop the overeating you can't stop the gossip you can't stop the negative thoughts if you don't have the power over it it has the power over you which means I am no longer free I have become a slave and anything that is not Christ should not be your master should not so let's put all of the other arguments aside it's not a big deal. Stop. It's not a big deal. Just stop. Yes. If you really think it's not a big deal, and if you just stop, Amen. prove me wrong. Go, go two months without it and say it was easy, and I'll tell you, okay, go get drunk. No, I won't tell you that. But if there's something where I can give it up if I want to, prove it. And if you can't do it, it has mastered you. Nice. It has made you its slave. Yes. That should terrify the living daylights out of you. Yeah. That this thing, what is it? Because a cigarette can't make you a slave. There is a spirit behind this thing. Yeah. Which is why God told you don't touch it. Yeah. Which is why God told Israel, take none of it. Because there is a spirit behind these things which I don't want at play in your life at all. Yeah. What spirit is behind that pornography that has you enslaved? What spirit? Not what image can you look when your wife or your husband is asleep or your parents are asleep that nobody's going to catch you. What spirit has made you its slave? And what does that mean for where you want to get with God? That means today in churches, lifting up holy hands all over the place, people are enslaved by things that God willingly, happily, you went and brought it to your house. Today, we hold up the standard of God's word. Amen. Because if you don't know that it's a problem, you will stay a slave. But there's a standard that is being raised up that says, no, my brothers and my sisters, we need to beat these things. Yes. We need to put these things down. Because here's Amen. the line. I'll draw a line in the sand. You know, you see in the movies, I'll draw a line in the sand. You stay on that side. Cross this line and see what... The devil doesn't play that game. There is no scenario where you draw a line in the sand and say, devil, you stay on that side, I stay on this side. The thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. It's not okay if he's on that side of the line, you take him out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because the longer you leave him at play, yeah. the greater danger you are in that yes. he will kill you. Because he comes to steal, yes. to kill yes. and to destroy. Yes. And so for all of you who said, I know my boundaries, I know my limits, I know how far I can go, I'm saying, perish the thought. Yes. Take the line off the sand and say, this is an all or nothing fight. Yes. Either I die in my sins and transgressions, I'm not talking about eternal salvation because once we give our lives to Jesus, we are saved. I'm talking about promise. Either I die in the sinful way without entering into promise, or devil, you die. Amen. I know what I pick. Yeah. Yes. I know what I pick. Can we come to that place? This is how Israel got free. Closing. Bring what you hid under your tent. Uncover it. Because it's not okay if it's secret. It's still not okay. Bring it out into the light. Here's the good news. God's instruction is not then stone them and burn them. God's instruction is put it to death. That you might conquer. Amen. Because the next story is Israel goes and defeats I. They do go and conquer. So for every person here today, I'm telling you, what's hidden, your dirty little secret, it's not okay. You need to go and understand that it is not okay. Bring it to the light of God's word, which is what we are doing today. Put that thing to death. Amen. Because the devil can't make you, God won't force you. Yeah. It's, you can put it to death. Yeah. Go and sin no more. Amen. And the land is yours.